I've been since my podcast with longevity getting a lot of questions about this actual test and what the results look like. So I'm going to just briefly show you what my own dashboard looks like here uh, for the gut test. And if you go listen to my podcast with longevity, which you'll see linked to uh, underneath or near to this video, you can go listen in and find out that this will also be rolled out for the blood, for the urine, for the saliva. But ultimately, this is what the gut panel looks like after they analyze these six gigs of data and look at 39 different cells of my microbiota. You can see here that the one of the first things they do is they run through inflammation when you log in. You can see I possess a lot of the bacteria that would put me at high risk for inflammation. And later in this video, you'll see that there are specific recommendations for what could lower that inflammation and assist with this. But this is very valuable data for me to have because I have a high inflammation score and that's something I can start to work on right away. Uh, constipation, you can see that I have low risk for constipation based on this analysis. And what I really like about this analysis is I can see every single shred of research. Like it's all very research backed. And I can also go over here and I can review the different interventions recommended to improve that score, which I'll show you farther down. If I click on this, it'll just jump farther down. Uh, and you can also see the different bacterial species and, uh, and be able to delve more into those. Uh, diarrhea, you can see that uh, everybody loves to talk about diarrhea, my potential for that, as well as the interventions that could be uh, indicated to help me out with uh, increased risk for, for diarrhea. Bacterial diversity, you can see that I was at 58%. Diversity score is moderate. This influences my need for a wide variety of fermented foods, as well as probiotics that would actually seed the gut. And uh, you know, I'd, and, and rotation of probiotics is even something that can help out quite a bit with this diversity score, just not, not myopically using just one probiotic and also not myopically using just one fermented food, but using a wide variety like kefir, yogurt, kimchi, sauerkraut, natto, etc. Uh, these are my micronutrients, which are produced by the bacteria in my gut. So I can see if I have risk for deficiency on any of those, which I don't. Uh, you can see the different probiotics that I'm actually deficient in. And while there isn't a great deal of research showing that, hey, you're deficient in whatever, uh, let, let's say baxless coagulins or bifidobacterium bifidum, that supplementation with that would necessarily fix all the issues uh, because sometimes it doesn't populate the gut unless you decide, and this is something a lot of people do, that you're going to crack open the probiotic tablets and just do an enema, you know, just like hang upside down an inversion table and, and administer yourself a probiotic enema with the specific strains. That can work, but taking them orally may not actually replenish some of these, but taking probiotics orally, even though the mechanism of action is still uh, not quite clear, can at least help with the symptoms induced by certain bacterial species being low in the gut. So it's like take them orally, but also, if you can, take them anally. Uh, pathogens, you can see I've got a cryptosporidium here. So I'll be investigating, and you'll, you'll see some of the recommendations farther down on how I can get rid of that cryptosporidium parasite that was found in my gut, because that can be a pathogenic organism. You can see here my phyla, my firmicute bacteria ratio, which influences body composition. Uh, you want that to be high, above 10, ideally. Mine is good, so I'm happy about that. Uh, and then you can see even the breakdown of the different DNA found in my stool sample and how that compares to other species. You can also uh, read up on some of the research that indicates what that DNA actually means. Uh, and then we get into the actual recommendations, right? My recommendations for a Mediterranean diet, which based on my genetic testing, I know to actually be the diet that agrees with me quite a bit. The only modification I make is because I'm an athlete, I work in a lot more uh, organ meats. Uh, and I also work in kind of like the Weston A. Price diet, a wide variety of, of fermented foods. Uh, so the only thing I do is I modify Mediterranean diet and actually do consume red meat, even though this can says consume rarely, you know, I'm probably have red meat at least a couple of times a week. Uh, then what's cool is they have recipes here. Uh, longevity is going to start working with food delivery services to, for those of you who are lazy and don't like to cook to actually deliver the foods to your house. And then there are certain supplements that are recommended here. And you can even just like click and get them if you wanted them. Like for me, they're recommending entero men for the digestive inflammation, uh, I'll also be using the Thorn Mediclear. Uh, they recommend certain probiotic strains that specifically address the probiotics I'm deficient in. Uh, they're recommending a few other things for some of my specific 
profile uh, in my gut, your recommendations might be different. Uh, then they've got some exercise recommendations on there. And as they roll out more and more data, more and more profiles, since you've they've got all your data, your dashboard kind of expands as new research comes out. So it's pretty slick. Just wanted to give you a, a quick video that outlines what that looks like.